the story of how the Polynesian people came to inhabit their island homes scattered across the Pacific has captivated researchers for centuries. From the moment European explorers first encountered these skilled seafarers living on remote islands, separated by thousands of kilometres of open ocean, questions arose. Where did they come from? How did they navigate such vast distances? And perhaps most puzzling of all, how did a population originating in Southeast Asia with roots in Taiwan manage to spread across an oceanic territory larger than all the world's continents combined? Before diving into the origins of the Polynesian people, it's worth understanding the geographic scope of their territory. The region known as Polynesia forms a vast triangle in the Pacific Ocean, with its corners marked by Hawaii in the north, New Zealand in the southwest, and Easter Island, Rapa Nui, in the southeast. Within this enormous triangular region lie numerous island groups, including Samoa, Tonga, the Cook Islands, the Society Islands, including Tahiti, the Marquesas, and many others. What makes this region particularly remarkable is its isolation. Many of these islands are separated from each other and from continental land masses by thousands of kilometres of open ocean. The settlement of these islands represents one of the most impressive feats of exploration in human history, especially considering it was accomplished long before the development of modern navigation technologies. Modern genetic research has revolutionised our understanding of Polynesian origins, allowing scientists to trace population movements with unprecedented precision. The genetic evidence tells us that Polynesians have a complex ancestry that combines lineages from both island Southeast Asia and Melanesia, though in varying proportions. According to recent genome-wide studies, the majority of Polynesian ancestry, roughly 70-80%, to 80 derives from populations in island Southeast Asia, particularly from the Philippines and eastern Indonesia. The remaining 20-30% to 30 of their genetic ancestry comes from Melanesian populations, specifically from the region of Papua New Guinea and the northern Solomon Islands. This genetic evidence supports what's known as the slow boat model of Pacific settlement, which suggests that the ancestors of Polynesians originated in Taiwan and island Southeast Asia, then gradually moved eastward through Melanesia before expanding into the remote Pacific. During this journey, they mixed with Melanesian populations to varying degrees, which explains the dual ancestry visible in their genomes today. Interestingly, recent studies of Y chromosome lineages, passed from fathers to sons, and mitochondrial DNA, mtDNA, passed from mothers to old children, reveal a fascinating pattern. While the majority of Polynesian mtDNA belongs to the haplogroup B4A1A1, often called the Polynesian motif, which is of Asian origin, many of their Y chromosome lineages, like C2A1P33 and S2AP79, have proposed ancestral associations with Melanesian populations. This suggests a sex bias in ancestral mixing, with more Melanesian men than women contributing to the Polynesian gene pool. Research published in 2018 by Hujashov and colleagues found evidence of a significant admixture event occurring between 1,200 and 1,700 years ago in the ancestors of Eastern Polynesians from the Leeward Society Islands. This genetic date aligns with archaeological evidence suggesting a late chronology for the settlement of eastern Polynesia around 1,000 years ago. When we look at the specific contributions to Polynesian genomes, the clearest signal comes from lowland populations of the Philippines. This matches the linguistic evidence which has long suggested connections between Polynesian languages and those spoken in the Philippines and Taiwan. In fact, all Polynesian languages belong to the Austronesian language family, which originated in Taiwan approximately 5,000 to 6,000 years ago. While genetics provides crucial insights into Polynesian ancestry, archaeology offers tangible evidence of their movements through the Pacific. One of the most important archaeological signatures is the Lapita Cultural Complex, named after a site in New Caledonia where distinctive pottery was first identified. The Lapita culture emerged in the Bismarck Archipelago of northern Melanesia around 3,450 to 3,250 years ago and quickly spread into southern Melanesia and western Polynesia by around 3,000 years ago. These seafaring people are recognised by their distinctive dentate stamped pottery, which features intricate geometric patterns created by pressing toothed tools into clay before firing. Beyond pottery, the Lapita people brought with them a suite of cultural practices, including farming of taro, yams and breadfruit, as well as raising pigs and chickens. They established settlements on coastal plains with access to both marine and terrestrial resources. 
Most importantly, they possessed sophisticated seafaring technology that allowed them to cross significant ocean gaps between islands. For many years, researchers debated whether the Lapita represented primarily the expansion of people from island Southeast Asia, or whether they developed locally in Melanesia. Recent ancient DNA evidence has provided clarity on this question. Analysis of ancient genomes from Lapita, contexts in Vanuatu, approximately 2,900 years old, and Tonga, approximately 2,500 years old, revealed that these early settlers carried almost 100% Asian ancestry, with little to no Melanesian genetic contribution. This suggests that some Lapita voyagers moved rapidly through Melanesia without significant genetic mixing with the indigenous populations they encountered. The Melanesian genetic component now visible in modern Polynesian genomes appears to have been added later, during a secondary period of contact and admixture about 1,900 to 1,200 years ago. No discussion of Polynesian origins would be complete without examining the remarkable watercraft that made their ocean voyages possible. The ability to design, build and navigate vessels capable of crossing thousands of kilometres of open ocean was central to the Polynesian expansion across the Pacific. The primary vessel used for long-distance voyaging was the double-hulled canoe. These impressive craft consisted of two parallel hulls connected by a central platform. The double hull design provided exceptional stability and carrying capacity, allowing these vessels to transport dozens of people along with plants, animals and supplies needed to establish new settlements. Polynesian canoes typically featured hulls with rounded V shapes that were carved from large trees, often breadfruit or other hardwoods. Where massive trees weren't available, builders developed sophisticated plank building techniques, joining smaller pieces of wood with precise joinery and senate cord lashings made from coconut fibre. Archaeological discoveries of ancient canoe parts suggest some of these vessels reached impressive dimensions, with some potentially measuring over 20 metres in length. For propulsion, Polynesian canoes used both paddles and sails. The distinctive sail design most associated with Polynesian craft is the crab claw sail, an inverted triangular configuration that provided excellent performance across a range of wind conditions. These sails allowed the canoes to achieve impressive speeds, with some modern reconstructions demonstrating speeds of 10 to 15 knots in favourable conditions. Recent experimental research has shed light on the sailing capabilities of these ancient vessels. A 2023 study by Irwin tested the performance of replica Polynesian canoes using wind tunnel tests and hull towing experiments. The results showed that double-hulled canoes with V-shaped hulls performed significantly better in upwind sailing than single outrigger canoes with U-shaped hulls. The superior upwind capability would have been crucial for voyagers hoping to return home after sailing with prevailing winds. What's particularly remarkable about Polynesian sailing technology is that it was developed to handle the specific conditions of the open Pacific. These vessels could sail against the wind when necessary, though not as efficiently as modern yachts, handle rough seas, and carry enough supplies to sustain crews for voyages lasting weeks or even months. Modern reconstructions of traditional vessels, such as the Hawaiian Hokulea, have successfully recreated ancient voyaging routes using only traditional navigation techniques, proving the effectiveness of these ancient technologies. Equally impressive as their vessel design was the Polynesian mastery of navigation without instruments. Traditional Polynesian wayfinding is considered one of the most sophisticated navigation systems ever developed, without the use of compasses, sextants, or other tools. Polynesian navigators relied on detailed observation of the natural world to find their way across the ocean. They memorized the rising and setting positions of stars throughout the year, effectively using them as directional guides. They studied ocean swells, understanding that islands could affect wave patterns in predictable ways that could be detected far from land. They observed cloud formations, knowing that clouds often hang over islands, even when the land itself is beyond the horizon. Bird behaviours provided another crucial navigation cue. Certain seabirds like the white tern and noddy tern fly out to sea in the morning to hunt and return to land in the evening. By watching the direction of their flight, navigators could infer the location of nearby islands. This complex knowledge was preserved through oral tradition, passed down from master navigators to carefully selected apprentices through years of instruction. What's remarkable is that this system proved accurate enough to allow Polynesian voyagers to repeatedly find tiny islands in the vast Pacific, and to maintain contact between distant island communities separated by thousands of kilometres of ocean. In recent decades, as mentioned earlier, there has been a revival of traditional navigation practices across Polynesia. 
The Polynesian Voyaging Society, established in 1973, built the Hokulea, a double-hulled canoe based on traditional designs. In 1976, they successfully sailed from Hawaii to Tahiti, using only traditional navigation techniques, guided by Mao Piailug, a master navigator from Micronesia. This journey helped spark a renaissance of traditional wayfinding across the Pacific that continues today. By combining evidence from genetics, archaeology, linguistics, and oral traditions, researchers have reconstructed the general sequence of the Polynesian settlement of the Pacific. As mentioned earlier, this journey unfolded over roughly 2,000 years and proceeded in distinct phases. The Austronesian expansion began in Taiwan around 5,000 to 6,000 years ago. From there, these seafaring people spread south through the Philippines and into island Southeast Asia. After the settlement of Samoa and Tonga, there was a significant pause in eastward expansion, lasting approximately 1,500 to 2,000 years. During this period, a distinctly Polynesian culture developed, characterized by shared cultural practices, technologies, and linguistic features that differentiate Polynesian societies from other Austronesian groups. A striking new study published in 2021 by Ioannidis and colleagues used genome-wide data from 430 modern individuals from 21 key Pacific Island populations to reconstruct the branching sequence of Polynesian migration with unprecedented detail. Their analysis revealed a serial founder expansion that originated in Samoa and spread first through the Cook Islands, then to the Society Islands in the 11th century, the Western Australia Islands, and to Amotu Archipelago in the 12th century, and finally to more distant islands including the Marquesas, Raivavai, and Easter Island, Rapa Nui, by approximately 1200 AD. This genetic evidence aligns well with the latest archaeological chronology, which has significantly revised earlier estimates for the settlement of eastern Polynesia. Current archaeological data suggest that the permanent settlement of the Society Islands began around approximately 1000 AD, with more distant islands like Easter Island, Hawaii and New Zealand being settled in the subsequent 200 to 300 years. One of the most intriguing aspects of Polynesian prehistory involves the sweet potato, Kumara, this food crop is native to South America, yet was widespread throughout Polynesia by the time European explorers arrived in the 18th century. Since sweet potatoes cannot survive floating in salt water for long periods, their presence in Polynesia has long been considered evidence for some form of pre-European contact between Polynesia and the Americas. Supporting this hypothesis is the remarkable linguistic connection. The word for sweet potato in many Polynesian languages is kumara, or some variant thereof, strikingly similar to kumar or kumal, terms used for the sweet potato in Quechua and other indigenous South American languages. Recent genetic research has provided compelling evidence for actual human contact between Polynesia and South America. A 2020 study published in Nature found clear signs of Native American DNA in the genomes of indigenous people from several islands in eastern Polynesia. Intriguingly, this genetic evidence dates the contact to around 1200 AD, aligning closely with archaeological dates for the sweet potato's introduction to Polynesia. What's particularly fascinating is that this genetic contact appears to have first occurred in the Marquesas Islands, rather than on Easter Island, Rapa Nui, which is the closest Polynesian island to South America. This suggests that Polynesian voyagers, not South Americans, were likely responsible for making this epic journey and returning with both sweet potatoes and, apparently, some South American individuals. The sweet potato wasn't just incidental to Polynesian societies. It became a crucial crop across much of Polynesia. In New Zealand, where the cooler climate limited the growth of traditional Polynesian crops like taro, the sweet potato, kumara, became the primary cultivated food plant, allowing Maori to establish permanent settlements in regions that would otherwise have been marginal for agriculture. Linguistically, as mentioned before, all Polynesian languages belong to the oceanic subgroup of the Austronesian language family. This family originated in Taiwan and spread through island Southeast Asia before reaching Oceania. The Polynesian languages form a distinct subgroup within Oceanic languages, and their close relationship to each other suggests they diverged relatively recently, consistent with the archaeological timeline of Polynesian expansion. As discussed briefly earlier, traditional Polynesian societies shared many cultural features despite being scattered across vast distances. These included similar social structures centered around chiefs, comparable religious practices involving ancestor worship, and shared artistic traditions with recurring motifs. Traditional architecture, 
fishing techniques and agricultural practices also showed remarkable similarities across Polynesia, reflecting their common heritage. Material culture provides another window into Polynesian origins. Tools, weapons, ornaments and everyday objects followed similar patterns across Polynesian societies, with regional variations developing over time. Stone adds heads, fish hooks and other artefacts show clear evolutionary relationships across different island groups, supporting the model of sequential settlement from west to east. Oral traditions also preserve memories of voyaging and the settlement of new islands. Many Polynesian societies maintained detailed genealogies and migration stories, some of which have proven remarkably consistent with archaeological and genetic evidence. While these oral histories were often interwoven with mythological elements, they contain valuable historical information about population movements, inter-island contacts, and the founding of new communities. Today, approximately 2 million ethnic Polynesians live worldwide, with significant populations in New Zealand, Hawaii, Samoa, Tonga, Tahiti, and other Pacific islands. Many more people of partial Polynesian descent live in countries like Australia, the United States, and New Zealand. The genetic origins of the Polynesian people reveal one of humanity's most impressive stories of exploration and adaptation.